Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and this project this week is a very simple one. We're going to take a piece of cypress I've had lying around and we're going to make an elevated dog food holder. Very simple construction, going to use pocket holes to put it all together. After I go ahead and make these marks to cut out the holes for the bowls, guess what I do? Yes, pour some epoxy in it for a little bit of an accent, but I realize, mistake. I burned through the surface too much. What was I to do? Well, I persevered, I turned that into a design element and yes, it turned out great. So great, even your loved ones can enjoy it as well. If you want to see how it all comes together, let's go. All right, guys, let's just jump into this thing. I've got a piece of cypress I've had for about a year. Actually, I actually have two of them. I'm probably going to make some outdoor furniture with it eventually. But for this project, I'm going to take two pieces around three feet long, and uh, we're going to cut these down to size and then send them through our surface planer. But before I do that, I've got a piece of old mahogany, I believe. At least I think it's mahogany. I'm going to cut that down to size to use it as a contrasting wood in this project as well. You can see here the left and the right side of this board are perfectly nice and flat but there's still a cup right there in the middle so i'm going to continue to send it through the surface planer taking off about a 32nd or a 16th of an inch at a time and then i'm going to take this piece of mahogany that has all kinds of checks and imperfections we're going to cut this down on the table saw and use this in the project as well all right guys i'm going to bring you in here real quick because i don't really like this color combination you probably already see that there's a made dog bowl set here uh, I made this for a client. She had she has yet to pick it up, uh, but the walnut and you know a little bit of course, well, of course there's a little bit of epoxy in there. But the walnut looks great, and I, <clears throat> by the smell of this alone, and I don't know really what this is. I think it's mahogany, uh, but it has more of like a an orangish color. I don't really know. I'm a woodworker, but I'm not really. I'm more of a DIY kind of guy. So wood species is not my specialty. I just don't like this really weird color combination. And so what I was going to do, I was going to take some of this leftover walnut that I have and go ahead and use this. They contrast a bit better. Um, but quite honestly, I think I'm just going to make the whole thing out of cypress. <laughs> I think I'm just going to use one color and I might do some epoxy with this one. I'm not sure. Um, I think I will. Anyway, I'm going to make the whole thing out of cypress. So let's just get to that and thanks for letting me ramble on about my lack of color in this project. <laughs> I do apologize for all the noise that those cicadas were making in the background. I do have a garage shop that has the door open when I'm working and you, sometimes nature wins out. But hopefully you got the point of what I was trying to say and you weren't too distracted by all the noise that the bugs were making. Anyhow, back to the build. So I've taken a few strips of the same cypress wood and I'm cutting them down to around four and a half inches in length. These are going to be the actual feet that are going to be attached to the top. Now, the stretchers that are going to be in between the two feet on either side are cut here. They're about six or so inches in length. I take a measurement in between them and I'm cutting one more stretcher that's going to go across the piece at the bottom and this is going to tie in the legs, making everything very strong. So now I'm going to put the whole thing together with pocket hole joinery and for that I'm using Armor Tools Auto Jig. Now this tool is pretty revolutionary in the world of pocket hole joinery. It takes all the guesswork out by measuring the thickness of the piece of the wood that you're using and it goes from there. It takes the depth of the collar, the length of the cut, everything you need, even the, even the size of the screws is color coded by the thickness of the piece of wood that you're using. I'm going to link them down below. Go check out armortool.com. The link is down in the description. They can explain it a lot better than I can, but so far so good. I'm very impressed with how this is working. So here's what I'm talking about with the powder coated color screws. This one happens to be blue and that is the length of screw I need for the depth of wood that I'm using. All right, now I would have done this before cutting the pieces, but I didn't realize I was gonna make this design choice until after cutting the legs. But either way, I'm using a quarter inch round over bit and I'm rounding over all the pieces of the legs. As you can see, it's gonna give it this kind of retro feel to it, especially with the color, that kind of nice golden color. It reminds me of something right out of the 60s and 70s. Either way, a little hand sanding on each piece, giving them a nice soft feel. And yeah, my, uh, my drumstick twirling skills are still in full effect from high school marching band for sure. So I actually forgot to drill those pocket holes in the long stretcher, so I did that now, and now I'm turning my attention back to the actual top. We're gonna go ahead and round over all the edges, and then clamp it in place and give it a nice sanding from 180 all the way up to 240. 
So I need to find the diameter of the inside of these bowls just under the lip. And how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take the circumference of each bowl, which is 22 and a half. I'm gonna divide that by pi, 3.14159, which I did not type in. And it gives me 7.16 inches. I then divide that in half, and that's the measurement I use for my compass, giving me the perfect measurement I need to cut it out with a jigsaw. I'm gonna clamp this thing in place. I'm gonna drill a hole in to give me some relief to put the jigsaw blade down into. And we're gonna go ahead and cut these circles out just like this. With the holes cut, I'm gonna take that same quarter inch round over bit and I'm gonna give some relief to the edges on both the top and the bottom. And it looks like we have a perfect fit. Good job, high school math class. You really did teach me something I need later in life. So to put these legs together, I'm just gonna use a simple clamp. I'm gonna clamp them in place with a spacer block, giving me a little bit of relief to raise that stretcher up by three quarters of an inch. And then drill those pocket holes in just like this and pretty simple stuff. I do the same technique on the stretcher that's gonna go in between the two legs. Clamp it in place and put the screws to it. Now to actually put the top in, these legs are ingrained, so I'm gonna flood the surface with a little bit of glue. I'm gonna wait a few minutes, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna flood them with some more glue as well, which is gonna kinda of soak in the ingrain, giving me a little bit better hold, at least I think it will. Once that glue dries up a little bit, put one more coat on, Go ahead and make sure that everything is lined up just right. Clamp it in place. And again, like I said, put the screws to it. Couldn't be simpler. So at this point, this is my attempt to add some visual interest to this dog bowl. I've taken my table saw blade and I've raised it up by about a quarter of an inch. And I'm slowly inching the fence back just a little bit, which is going to give me a groove inside the top of this bowl. You can see there. It's about a quarter inch deep and it's about a quarter inch wide as well. My goal here is to pour some epoxy in there, giving it a nice different contrasting color. But first, I'm gonna take some house wrap tape and kind of seal up these edges pretty well before I'm able to do this pour. At this point, I've mixed up some high performance epoxy from Total Boat. Again, I have links to their website as well and I have a coupon code to save you 20%. So check out the description. If you type in Glimpse In at checkout, you can get 20% off any of their products and I definitely recommend you check them out. So I'm gonna cut this sanding clip short because I'm gonna to explain to you the mistake I made right now. Well guys, this is woodworking for you. I'm gonna bring you in one more time to explain something. I made a big mistake here. Uh, when I poured this epoxy, well, I didn't do that great of a job. I should have sealed the grain before I did this. So what happened was the actual epoxy started getting into the fibers of the grain all the way down on all of these cuts. And I tried sanding through it and by the time I did, guess what, the epoxy was gone. So I decided to use that mistake and change a design element and let me show you exactly what we did so I'm going to show you with my good old Festool Rotex sander it's the most expensive tool in the shop and I invested in it eight years ago for this very reason I'm going to put the spurs to it we're going to get that Rotex mode going and it's going to create a little bit different design and hopefully it turns out well so let's try that now all right, so here's what I'm talking about. I got the Rotex system going. It is really grinding away a lot of the surface, and I'm trying to make it look like a blue frame around the actual edge, and that didn't work either. It just was really too difficult to kind of get a cohesive look there, and I kept taking away more and more epoxy. Eventually, the right and left sides disappeared. The top and bottom I left, but as you can see, there is a really massive slope. And I'm gonna show you in different angles, a really massive slope around the whole piece, and I absolutely love it. It turned out great. It just shows you. You just gotta keep putting one foot in front of the next, and you're gonna come to a result that you might like. And now time for some hand wipe on finish. This is my favorite wipe on finish ever. It's homemade. Three parts, boiled linseed oil, mineral spirits, and polyurethane. You can't go wrong. Well, after one coat of hand rubbed boiled linseed oil, mineral spirits, and polyurethane uh, yeah check this out look at the design guys I actually think I think it looks great and yeah I did it on purpose I totally made this kind of sloped edge design completely on purpose yeah right uh, guys thank you for joining me this is one of those things where it actually you turned a mistake into something that would have been better than what I would have originally come up with in my head I absolutely love how this looks now and I just want to show you guys if you just stick to it your stick to matters in woodworking. Don't get discouraged. I almost did, trust me. I was thinking, oh my gosh, this whole project is shot. 
Well, turns out that it wasn't. I love how this turned out. And quite frankly, the lady who this is going to, her kitchen has this kind of style woodworking in it. Unbeknownst to me, it's gonna be a perfect fit. So don't give up, keep on moving, and thanks for joining me. So then I break the surface with a 400 grit sanding pad and I repeat this process four times, giving me a nice clean luster. As you can see here, the process is pretty simple, but it looks like I got right home from work and didn't even change my clothes. I just decided I want to put a coat of finish on here. Anybody else ever do that? I'm just curious, leave me a comment down below if you've gotten home from work and didn't even change, you just got right into the shop. So here are a couple of shots to show you exactly that slope and just how this turned out. I really am pleased with it. I really am happy with how it turned out and I'm gonna go ahead and get a uh, more of a professional opinion here. As you're gonna see, I'm gonna invite my daughter to check it out and here's what she thinks. You like it? <laughs> cool, huh? You wanna put food in it? No? <laughs> you wanna put water in it? Yeah, put water in it. Well, there you have it, guys. That is this week's project complete, and I definitely want to thank you all for joining me and watching this all the way to the end. I very much appreciate your viewership as well. This project really taught me a lot. It taught me a lot of patience. It taught me that, you know, sometimes you just got to keep putting one foot in front of the next. And just like in life in general, woodworking, you got to do the same kind of thing. So, guys, thank you again for joining me. Also, I want to thank my Patreon supporters as well. They are linked in every single description that I do. And uh, you know what? If you want us to help support the channel, I'm going to put a link down there below as well. We've got a pretty cool reward system going on in different tiers. I invite you to check that out. If it's for you, fantastic. If it's not, no pressure at all. And again, I just want to thank you all for joining me and watching this video. Guys, I will see you on that next project. Again, my name is Chris, and this has been A Glimpse Inside, and we'll see you next time.